Hey Pee Wee Homies, Jay War here with another video. So today we're going to talk about getting into some Alk and Go low investment strategies. This video is going to be a little bit of a summarization of what I've found to be the best strategies this league and more of a how to design your own strategies uh, around the good things in the league. Basically, uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to mention here, all the different league mechanics, all the different Atlas passive setups, and if you use some combination of all the stuff I list in this video in some kind of Atlas passive tree setup, you're going to make pretty good prop. I've made a few examples of really good setups that I think. I've got three examples of good Atlas Passive Tree setups. I'm going to go over the thought process I used for setting up a lot of these and how I laid out these uh, these Atlas Passive Tree setups and these Farming Strat setups and how you can go about doing it as well uh, using the same similar thought process. So let's go through and look at, in my opinion, the best league mechanics this league for doing low investment out and go stuff, right? All altars. Altars are probably the best. I would probably wouldn't put an Atlas Passive Tree together that didn't have some kind of altar farming on it. It's just free, easy money, and it's always really good. You can drop a three stack of Awakened Sextants from altars really easily with map currency items, and you're gonna get nine chaos right there, minimum, right? You can probably get more if you sell in bulk. Uh, Essence. Essence is really solid. The market on Essence, some people say is saturated. I disagree, I think, because Essence is as the premier crafting method. This league are in such high demand. I don't really think there might be some ups and downs in the market, but it's not ever going to be bad. So, cost, uh, 2C. 2C per, so we'll go over the cost real quick here. Performance-based, uh, yes or no, I should mention this as well. Uh, time, 30 seconds for Eldritch Altar is probably too high, actually, probably more like 20 seconds, but it does take a little bit of time for each pack to come up. Uh, so it adds a little bit of time to your map there. Cost, it's free. Map specific, no. Stream of Conscious, yes. Singular Focus, yes, right? So those are the two uh, keystones we're going to be worried about with these strategies. Most, really, there's only two differences. In Legion, you don't use Stream of Consciousness because we're going to be using Rusted Scarabs. And with Boss Drops for maps, we don't use Singular Focus because it's going to limit our uh, Conqueror, Guardian, and Shaper Synthesis map drops from the bosses. So... Let's get to the next thing. So Essence, really good. Legion, everybody knows Legion is really good. This patch, the reason I'm only doing Rusted Scarabs here on this uh, example is because any other Scarab is more expensive because everybody's doing Legion right now. It's really good. So Expedition, really good as well. You don't need investment for it. Uh, it's also a little bit performance-based as is Legion. You need a lot of pack clear. Uh, and I should mention with Essence, you're also going to need a strong character with high single target to take down those Essences in a reasonable amount of time, right? 20 seconds here for all Essences in your maps. That's um, pretty good. You're going to need a high DPS build to get those kind of performance numbers, right? And uh, then Expedition. Uh, a lot of tough monsters in Expedition as well. You need to want explosions help a lot with Legion and Expedition. Make sure you've got something that can handle those if you're going to run those. Deli Mirror. Uh, performance phase? No, not really. The Deli Mirror does make monsters harder in your map, but they're not that much harder really unless you get really deep into the mirror, you get 6-7 rewards, something like that. Uh, but overall, not going to be too much of a problem for most builds. Strongbox. Performance phase? No. Alright. And then ball Drops? Not really. It's just like killing the balls like you normally would. And then Harvest? Uh, can kind of be performance based, right? So, I don't want to spend too much time talking about each category here, but basically, the takeaways are uh, you don't need to invest anything into any of these really, except for if you're going to do Essence, you want to use Essence on the map device. If you're going to do Legion, you want to get at least Rusted Scarabs, and that's what I would recommend for this level of juice. I wouldn't really go too much harder in any of the other uh, investments for Legion with this type of strategy, unless you're going for like a Grimro juice strat where you're putting a lot more uh, investment into your map, which is really good if you want to do it, but that's not what we're really talking about in this video. So, map specific, right? So, uh, I don't want to get into too much of these. This is kind of self explanatory, right? You don't have to run a specific map, but for these, you do have to run like a specific rank or Legion because you don't want it to be too spread out. Deli Mirror, uh, the longer the map, the better for the Deli Mirror. And then Boss Drops. Um, it is kind of map specific as boss maps with more bosses is going to be much better because you're going to get double the chance at boss drops, right? So, everything else not really map specific and we went over singular focus and stream of consciousness. So, some other things to mention as far as the league mechanics. Uh, ritual. Ritual is kind of always its own thing. Um, basically, if you do ritual, what I would recommend doing is I would buy a bunch of empty vessels 
which is uh, ritual splinters stacked up to a vessel. And then you fill the vessels when you complete a ritual and you take all the notes of the tree. Sometimes it'll give you a blood filled vessel without you having to click on the ritual, right? But we're getting into this kind of ritual thing. It's very feast or famine, I'll say with ritual. You're gonna invest into it. You can either sell your blood filled vessels after running all the rituals, or you could use them yourself and try to get those big items, which are gonna be, you could get a mirror. Everyone saw back in Ritual League, Utah grabbing his mirrors. Um, you could get apothecary cards. I've seen this league. I've seen some really big drops from Ritual this league. So it's always good to run, but it's kind of feast or famine. If you're going to run it, you got to commit to it and you got to stick with it until you get one of those big drops. You get a mirror, you get apothecary cards. Like I said, it can be really good, but it's going to take a lot of time before you see those results. Okay, so heist. Uh, yeah, you could turn on contracts and blueprints in your map for smuggler's cash if you want and then go run heist. Now, Blight is always pretty good. It's still pretty good because of the reward tile types coming from chests from Blight. You're going to want to run a specific map for Blight. So, okay, now let's get into the different maps that are good this league to run. So, Crimson Temple, pros, div cards, right? Everybody knows Crimson Temple has the best div cards. It's got a decent layout. Some people don't like the layout. I would say that's one of the cons. A lot of people kind of like, yeah, I don't like running Crimson Temple. I get stuck in the walls, the narrow corridors. It's annoying, right? Strand, a long map, really long map. It's got two bosses. It's got a really nice layout. Only downside is it doesn't have div cards, right? Mesa, a lot of people like doing Mesa for boss rushing. Um, it's got, you know, you get the boss really fast. It's got a pretty good layout otherwise, uh, but the downside is no really good div cards and it's kind of only good for that. It's not really good for a whole lot of other reasons. Dunes, great for Legion. It's basically the Legion map, right? If you're gonna run Legion, you, know, you wanna run Dunes this league. Uh, downside is it does have like a decent div card, but it's not really notable. Um, and it's basically only good for Legion. Uh, Defiled Cathedral, same thing as Crimson Temple, basically. Uh, density, people complain about. The layout is pretty good, probably better than Crimson Temple, but the mob density is kind of low. It does have a lot of monsters still, but they're really spread out. Uh, Jungle Valley, now this one's interesting to talk about. I only put this on because I recently watched a Grimro video, and um, he was talking about this very interesting mechanic on Jungle Valley, where the boss does not spawn, or count as being spawned in the map, until you enter the boss room. So... What that means is you're going to be able to take advantage of the Eldritch Altars with, uh, without the boss mechanic on it unless you go into the boss room, which you probably aren't going to do. So you basically get to boss rush without boss rushing on Jungle Valley, which is really advantageous and pretty cool. So that was really cool that Grimro found that out. Uh, Grimro is always finding out all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, you guys should check that video out if you want. I think it came out a day or two ago. Anyway. Let's get into the different strategies that I've set up here. So, with all those things combined that I just mentioned, different strategies I've set up here is just three examples, really. Uh, and one thing we should talk about here is maps per hour and currency per map. Now, generally with Alk and Go, you either want to be doing a lot of maps per hour because you want to be working towards things like screaming invitations and be killing a lot of bosses to get a lot of boss drops and just generally burning through a lot of maps per hour, getting the free stuff that you get every time you put a map in. Right, because we're not investing in the maps and all everything we encounter in our maps is basically free, right? So we get as much free stuff as possible with Alk and Go strategies every map, right? Because we're going to sustain our maps, we're going to sustain our chisels and our Alk orbs and everything we need to run the map, right? Basically, in addition to the things we pick up in the map. So doing a lot of maps is better than doing not as many maps. Now, there can be a situation where you're getting so much currency per map, even with Alk and Go, that is justifiable to take longer in the map. And I have one situation uh, for an Atlas strategy, which we've set up on Dunes, where we do that kind of strategy. But the Strand strategy here is going to be a pretty fast, a lot of maps per hour strategy. Like I added the style in here, which is kind of just like letting you know, yeah, we want to run a lot of maps per hour. We want the max tip maps to take about two, two and a half, three minutes at most per map, right? So let's take a look at the strategy though. I think I had this one open already. Uh, where is it? It is this one, I believe. Yeah, so the strand strategy revolves around conquer maps, synthesis maps. You can go guardian maps if you want, if you want to take out something like Strongbox here. Uh, we also have altar farming, which we have progress towards screaming invitations because we're gonna be running a lot of maps. And then we also have expedition, which expedition is kind of really just thrown on this strategy as a some extra currency to get in your map. You could throw in harvest if you want instead. It's gonna cost you about the same amount of points. Uh, you could even throw a legion in if you want instead. It, we have opted for more delirium splinters because you are going to get up to six rewards per uh, delirium mirror, which you should see a lot of delirium mirrors with stream of consciousness on for the strand strategy. 
And on second thought here, I probably wouldn't add Legion and do Scarabs because this, this strategy does revolve around Stream Consciousness and getting a lot of Delirium Mirrors per map. So anyway, and then you have a chance to add rewards and you're going to get a lot of Splinters. Uh, it's going to be pretty nice for that. And the other thing that's really nice now that I kind of haven't talked about much but I wanted to talk about is... Um, Deli orbs are coming up a lot in price because people are looking for them for the premier juice strategy that's kind of been discovered and gaining popularity now in that you juice your map for the delirium orb rewards more than more so than the monster drops themselves and you use a lot of skittering delirium orbs which people are re-rolling with harvest which is another thing we're going to talk about in a minute but they need the orbs in the first place so you're basically supplying orbs for these farmers and they're going to be going up in price because the demand is going to be increasing because the popularity is going up. So the strand stra strategy revolves around um, kind of taking advantage of that, taking advantage of the current market situation around Delirium Orbs. So another cool thing we have here and the reason why we went for Synth Maps and Conqueror Maps on the strat, like I said, I might have mentioned already, you can take Guardian Maps if you want, drop Strong Boxes. Um, Tormented Spirits, right? This is a nice thing, 10% chance every 10 maps or so. We're going to have Tormented Spirits surrounding the bosses. They're gonna drop a lot more stuff. So they're probably gonna have a better chance of dropping these Conk maps and Synth maps. And you have two bosses there to get empowered by the Tormented Spirits. It's a nice thing to add to this strategy. Okay, and I think I might have mentioned, but yeah, we have two bosses, so the Guardian and Conquer maps is good for Strand in that regard. And then Altar Farming, which I believe should be on just about every Alcan Go strategy. This league is just too good to not take. So, let's get into the next strat. Now, the next strat is interesting because it's more of a currency per map strategy, right? The maps per hour is going to be lower, right? So we're going to take more time per maps, but it's going to be worth... We're not going to be working towards screaming invitations. We're just going to be going for currency per map. So we're going to use a lot of league mechanics and take a lot of time, right? We're not going to use stream of consciousness either because we're going to use rusted scarabs with legion right we're going to force on legion every map we could get two legions every map and then we've got a little bit of strong box stuff and then we've got the other two league mechanics that are very rewarding but take a lot of time right and that's going to be expedition takes a decent amount of time and then harvest which takes a pretty good amount of time as well so we're spending a lot of time per map but we should be getting a lot of life force here we'll be getting a lot of expedition rewards and we'll be getting a lot of legion rewards in addition to that we also were able to fit in strong box rewards and altar farming so it's just a lot of stuff you're going to get out of these maps every map you run you're going to get a lot of rewards it's going to be a really nice but you're going to be spending more time per map and that's really the only point i wanted to talk about here everybody knows legion's good everyone knows Ex expedition is good uh, and the strong box and harvest right so to talk about harvest for a second too since we're on this certain atlas passive setup uh, Harvest is getting good because of what I mentioned earlier. People need to reroll their Deli Orbs for the Deli Orb Farm Strat. The Deli Orb Farm Strat revolves around juicing. You reroll your Deli Orbs to the best type, which is going to be either currency or scarab rewards using Harvest. So the demand for Harvest is going up. And the other thing to mention of why farming Harvest in maps is good right now, because slowly over the league now, the price of the memory farming for harvest the sacred grove memories has been going up and up and up and the profit margin on them is pretty bad now it's not as good as it once was so you're no longer competing as as uh as harshly i guess you could say with the people that are farming the premier method of farming harvest life force which was the which was the memories because they're not making as much per memory so it's not going to be as good so farming harvest in maps is really good and I've thought a couple scenarios about how to go about doing it. Um, there are sextants you could use to force on harvest, which you probably would want to use if you're going to do life force duplicate sextant as well. But I've talked to a lot of people about it, and I've tried it out myself, and it's pretty fine to just do it out and go. Obviously, you're not going to make as much, but it's absolutely fine to do out and go. You're going to make pretty good money, especially considering how the market is shaping out right now at this moment in time with harvest looking pretty good the prices keep going up somebody just linked me a graph of poe ninja the prices have increased about 25 percent across the board for all life force in the past day or so so harvest is looking pretty nice right now so that being said let's go over the last strategy i have here which was the strategy i've been running basically the whole league my alk and go crimson temple farm that i swapped between crimson temple and park a lot of you guys watch the stream watch the channel i have known about the strategy, you know what I've been doing. It basically revolves around Essence, Expedition, Strongbox, Altars, and Deli Mirror, right? And let's see, I believe it is over here. Uh, let's see, maybe I don't have it up. Uh, this is it. This is it right here. Okay, so this is it. Basically, all it is, so guys, we just take the Essence nodes uh, with Expedition, Strongbox. This is kind of a mistake right here. You can put this node somewhere else if you want, maybe just on Quant. Um, 
and altars, right? And we can do a lot of maps per hour. And we get a lot of screaming invitations. We get a lot of awakened sextants, stack decks, that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's just a pretty good map. We get map sustain. We can use uh, stream of consciousness as well as singular focus. And it's just a really solid strategy. Expedition is nice as well. Very profitable. Not a whole lot to talk about this one because I've run this strat quite a lot. And a lot of people know I've been running a strat and it's just a really solid strat. And I just threw this in here as another example. But basically, the point of this video and the point I want to drive home, guys, is if you use any of these mechanics, if you throw in any combination of these into your map uh, Atlas Passive Tree, and you can kind of sneak in three or four of them at a time on your Atlas Passive Tree, you're going to make good money. You're going to make good currency. Uh, obviously, the best ones are probably altars. I would go with every single time. Uh, essence, you can uh, you can choose to do or not if your build is good at doing essences, if you want to do essences, if you want to sell essences in bulk. Legion takes a while, but very rewarding. I would use Scarabs on Legion. Uh, and yeah, we kind of went over a lot of these already. I'm not going to go into them again, but these are the premier farming strategies for Alk and Go, and these are I go with. You could also try to fit some of these in if you want. Like, you could definitely swap in Ritual if you want to start filling up blood-filled vessels uh, for something else like Harvest. You know, you swap it in for Expedition even if you'd rather do that. They're going to take about the same amount of time. Um, and Blight is kind of its own thing, but it is notable worth mentioning if you want to do a strategy that revolves around Blight and try to add in things like Altars and maybe like Deli Mirror with Strongbox or something like that, maybe Boss Rush or do some Boss Drops, uh, something like that could be good, right? So I kind of just gave you the tools here to design your own Atlas Passive strategy and kind of wanted to go over the thought process of how I choose what I do when I make an Atlas Passive strategy. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out, come up with some cool atlas passive strategies some good farming strats and let me know um this is by no means a complete guide to everything that's out there that's the best to do this is just what i've come across in my experience uh playing the game so far this league and i think most people would agree that these are probably the best but there might be some stuff i'm missing and i'm very curious to know if somebody else is doing something else that um they think is maybe better than some of these strats and let me know about it but that's gonna do it for this one guys and thanks for watching